Excellent. So uh, next question, looking at low income fixed income families, such as seniors, they're having a hard time maintaining home ownership because of rising assessments, because of rising uh, rates. Do you plan on tackling this very urgent issue? Uh, absolutely. And uh, I'll tell you, we, we have taken certain measures to try to assist uh, seniors in with this issue. Uh, for example, the uh, low income uh, residential property tax credit, we've expanded that. It used to be that uh, we qualified for a $200 credit uh, if your income was $22,000 or below. Well, we have, uh, uh, we have bumped that amount up to $300 for those people, and then as well expanded the, the, uh, the eligibility. So if your income is between $22,000 and $25,000, you'll get a $200 credit. If your income is between $25,000 and $30,000, you'll get a $100 credit. Now, in addition to that, we've also uh, raised the low-income seniors benefit from $100 to $400. But we also are committed to dealing with this issue of uh, property taxation, fairness in property taxation. And that's why uh, that uh, we have indicated that we will put together a leadership panel that will study this issue over the next 18 months and to make recommendations to government. Now this is a process that has served us very well through the Pro Poverty Reduction Initiative. We brought together a large group of stakeholders uh, they worked uh, diligently uh, on uh, issues of poverty. It included uh, people who were living in poverty, for example, not just uh, government uh, uh, advisors or bureaucrats, but, but uh, members of nonprofit organizations, members of the business community, a very wide range of stakeholders. They come back with, with a very comprehensive plan that really has been uh, heralded across the country. And, uh, and now government is moving on those recommendations. And so we would look at a similar process. And uh, so what we're, we're proposing is that uh, we would engage, as a committee of stakeholders, representatives from the provincial government, obviously, uh, but from municipal governments as well, because it's certainly an important issue uh, from the local service districts, uh, the representatives of, of, of residential property taxpayers themselves, mm -hmm. and the commercial uh, property taxpayers, and the real estate association, and the home builders association, uh, and in addition to that, uh, um, the uh, Partner Owners Association, uh, who also have an interest in this issue. So uh, we're, tr we're trying to get a pretty good cross-section of people who are uh, involved in uh, uh, this issue on a daily basis. And uh, they will carry out their work, and then they will make recommendations to government. And I can tell you, we wouldn't go through this process if we weren't uh, determined as a government uh, to uh, act on these recommendations. Right. Last year, uh, we did try to deal with this issue. Uh, we brought a point forward what was called a tax adjustment point. And, uh, and basically, the way that would work is that uh, uh, we would uh, allow a municipality to have uh, an increase uh, based on the cost of new construction, because we know it costs more to put services into new construction water and sewage. Right. Um, we add an amount for inflation. And uh, uh, if assessments uh, had risen to a point that their, their tax revenue was beyond those two factors, the uh, rate of inflation, the cost of construction, then we would roll back the tax uh, rate. Um, we made it voluntary, however, because we didn't want to tie municipalities' hands, in the sense that there are some municipalities that may have projects going on that their communities would support and would be willing to pay that tax for. Unfortunately, we didn't get the uptake that we thought uh, we would, and uh, so consequently, even though the province of New Brunswick gave up over $12 million in revenue, um, we certainly didn't have uh, municipalities uh, following suit to the extent that we would like. And look, we understand as well, municipalities as well as provincial governments have their own challenges. Right. But again, I think we all have an interest in ensuring that our taxpayers, our residential taxpayers, are uh, uh, protected and have uh, a reasonable tax burden. Obviously, we, we don't want taxes to rise uh, to a point where uh, people are having difficulties uh, meeting their obligations. So that is the motivation for this. And recognizing that it's going to take 18 months for this process to go forward, uh, we have decided to freeze assessments during that period right. to give uh, taxpayers a break. Now, uh, there's been uh, a lot of talk uh, about uh, uh, different approaches to this, and I know uh, the Conservative Party has decided that they will raise, uh, uh, they will cap assessments at 3% uh, for the next two years, and that they will conduct a study. Well, 
and they haven't, I don't think, released the details of that study. That means that at the very least, people are going to see, obviously, a 6% increase in their assessments uh, over these next two years, and of course, correspondingly, an increase in the taxes. And we believe it's time to give people a break uh, while we bring together these recommendations. Uh, the other issue uh, is that uh, uh, I know that in the legislature this past session, that uh, members of the Conservative Party have been suggesting that the solution is a is a cap on assessments. And I can tell you that is not a solution. Um, it has been tried in other jurisdictions uh, uh, in the U.S. and Nova Scotia has looked at it. Now they are seeing uh, the difficulties with that. Uh, in, in the real estate market, it can create a real problem. It can, it can cause a slowdown in the real estate market. And it can cause great distortions where you could have two properties that should be valued at the same value because one has been capped, uh, but they are not. And so, for example, someone may decide, well, I'm not sure I'm going to sell my house because if that cap comes on, or I, if I buy another property, I'm going to have a higher tax burden than I have now. So there are, that's one disincentive, but it's only one. You can also shift uh, the tax burden to the commercial taxpayer, for example. There, there are many distortions that it creates, and that's why jurisdictions who try to uh, realize that it's not the best solution. Of course, the other thing, it doesn't prevent a municipality from uh, raising their tax rate. So you could cap an assessment, but uh, again, a municipality could raise its tax rate to obtain that additional revenue. So, so really, it's not a solution. Uh, I'm not going to certainly prejudge, prejudge what the uh, uh, what the committee is going to do, but uh, I would be surprised if they came back with this as the ultimate solution based on uh, what we've seen in the marketplace, and that's why, as a government, we do not advocate that. Okay, excellent. So, uh, last question would be surrounding double tax. We are the only province in New Brunswick that has double tax on non-occupied properties, so the piece of land, your cottage, more importantly, the investment property, the multi and We feel as an investment real estate association and as homeowners myself, that that's disproportionately putting the burden on the businesses as well as the renters. Do you plan on tackling the issue of double tax? There's no question that that has been an issue that has been raised, and I've met not only with the Real Estate Association, but with the Department Owners Association. And, and of course, the issue is also raised by recreational property owners. Uh, because, as you correctly point out, government provides a <coughs> residential property tax credit that reduces the tax on owner-occupied properties. Um, <coughs> excuse me. However, um, this is an issue that uh, certainly uh, government is very familiar with, and that's why we have appointed uh, to the uh, Leadership Commission a representative from the Apartment Owners Association. Uh, they will choose their representative. We're not dictating who should sit on that. And, uh, and they have been uh, very active on this file. Uh, I think they've been very successful lobbying, getting their point across, and they raise valid points. And so I would uh, assume that they will be very active on uh, this committee as well. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, it, you know how to get in contact with me if you have questions about property tax issues. It's ben.schmidt at me.com. Greg, what's the best way if a homeowner wants to get in touch with you um, to do so? Well, during this election campaign, they can contact me at my uh, campaign office, right. which is 206-6222. Uh, uh, and as well, I can reach by email at greg at gregburn.ca. Uh, uh, our campaign office is located on the corner of King and Brunswick Streets. They can certainly uh, drop in here as well at any time. And I can also be reached on Twitter. Excellent. Greg, thank you very much for joining us in the show. Thank you. Pleasure. Great.